Good morning guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna take this, the 2022 Kia EV6 rear wheel drive, 225 horsepower, 310 claimed miles of range. We're gonna take it out for our drive. I'm gonna let you know what it feels like to drive this and also of course compare it to my Tesla Model 3 and show you what it feels like in the three different drive modes that we have. We have Eco, Normal and Sport. So let's get out on the road and let's see what this Kia EV6 is all about. First of all, let's have a look a little bit on this gorgeous interior here. We have wireless charging right here, two cup holders. We have the start button, which will greet you with a cool graphic right there in the head of display hopefully that shows up on the gopro when we start the car it always starts in normal which is interesting because if i want to if i turn the car off in sport for example i kind of want it to start up in sport as well but now it starts at normal i think or maybe it starts at echo and echo is a really cool mode because it gives you a lot more range and it feels very different on the road from sport which i'm going to talk more about when we go out and drive this car so let's put it in drive another thing that's interesting or a little bit annoying is that you can see right here it starts at level three regen braking i always want to have the car in full regen braking when i'm driving the car i don't really understand why it can't have that default setting when you start the car to keep the setting that you had last so you always have to go and it's not a big deal you just click this paddle right here and it turns on max regen braking right there and i pedal one one driving is now enabled too so let's get out here on these roads and then take it out on the highway as well and talk about the handling what it feels like to drive this beautiful ev6 i think kia has done a fantastic job with this car because evs are pretty new to to all companies and this feels very solid however compare this to for example the tesla model 3 and it definitely feels a little bit more like a traditional crossover suv and what i mean by that is that it feels a little more spongy it kind of feels very soft in the suspension but it's a very comfortable ride and right now i'm in eco and I can switch that right here with this button down here on the steering wheel from Eco to Normal to Sport. But Eco is probably, honestly, the one setting that I would most likely drive in the most. That's what I've been doing these for, for these days, for this week that I've had this uh, car. I usually just keep it in Eco because it makes sense. It's not as sporty in Sport that the Sport setting uh, makes sense so it's not too sporty in sport setting and I get a lot less range in sport as well so I might as well just keep it in eco however the differences between eco and sport it feels like the, the way I can describe it is eco feels like a relaxed movie night with the family everybody's relaxed and chilled out and there is not a lot of stress going on if you switch it to sport it gets a lot more edgy and you can feel everything just tense up so if i switch it to sport here now you can feel that the throttle response instantly gives it a little push and you feel that the the, the paddle is a lot more responsive now in sport two very different uh settings and it also feels like you're losing about, you feel, it feels like you have 100 horsepower when you drive an Eco, but it is a very relaxing drive. We're gonna talk about the range in a different video. I'm gonna drive down to uh, Key Biscayne in a couple of days, and I'm gonna show you just how much range you can get out of this car. And it is actually really impressive. And here you have the 12 inch infotainment screen, as you can see right there, we have the 12 inch gauge cluster, and we can also have a bunch of cool sounds from uh, the vehicle when you're driving it. So we have, for example, active sound right here. We can change the different sounds of the amp motor from stylish, which sounds a little bit like this. Hopefully you can hear that. Then we have dynamic. Sounds a little more sinister, I guess. <laughs> Pretty cool. And last but not least, we have Cyber. Which literally feels like you're sitting in a spaceship. I prefer to have these off. It's just my personal 
preference to just have the uh, natural sound of the car and not have any uh, artificial sounds pump, pumped into the cabin. When you want to go and change lanes and you want to turn on the indicator, you can see that the camera pops up in the gauge cluster right there, which is convenient. So let's talk a little bit about speed. How quick is this EV6? So I'm going to come to a complete stop. And as you know, this is the single motor. So we have rear wheel drive and 225 horsepower. We're in sport right now, and I'm just going to floor it and show you the acceleration. And there we hit 60 so it's not the quickest EV and that's what I what I say what what I mean when I talk about the sport mode the sport mode isn't doesn't really do much when it comes to driving dynamics and fun we have a little rabbit right here in the grass you're gonna run away reverse camera is pretty good as you can see we have 360 camera right here and we have a pretty clear uh, view of the rear and the resolution is all right and again let's put it back in full regen braking again i do wish that the regen braking was a lot more forceful than it is at max level it feels a lot less uh, regen than you get in my Tesla Model 3 because when it comes to one pedal driving you need to plan it more since we have uh, not as forceful of a brake I use the brake brakes a lot more often in the in the Kia than I do in the Tesla just because of the regen braking not being as strong and that kind of feels like you're wasting energy because if you have stronger regen you're gonna get more energy back to the battery so I wish there was another setting above max regen that I could use but unfortunately that's not the case one feature I absolutely love is I'm gonna show you here as I come up to this car if you're on your phone and you don't pay attention to the red light when this car pulls away I'm gonna get a notification up on the head-up display and also a little chime and then you have the arrows in the head-up display as well I think that's a very useful feature because that means that I'm, I'm not gonna be behind you honking at you to pay attention to the red light because you have that chime key is the key is gonna do that for you all right guys so merging on to the highway and right now I'm in eco mode and this is the mode I love to have on the highway because it makes for such a relaxing drive in my opinion it's not as edgy as uh, responsive as in sport the throttle and it just makes for a nice cruise and obviously you get a lot more range when you're in eco as well the ev6 come with autonomous driving which means it's gonna stay in the lane on the highway when you apply the cruise control so let's do that right now and let's see how this actually works i'm not gonna have my hands on the steering wheel right here in this corner and let's see how it does so you do of course need to every now and then touch the steering wheel just to make sure uh, the car knows that you're still behind the wheel it's a very smooth ride this car and it feels like overall this compared to the tesla model 3 for example is that this feels more like a normal crossover suv uh, that is just electric and it, there's nothing wrong with that but the sportiness is definitely and not on the same level as the Tesla Model 3 or the Model Y. Those feel a lot more sports car-like in their character, while this very soft and subtle and very comfortable and relaxing drive. I think that's what Kia was going for as well with the EV6. And when you're in this mode, when you have the uh, cruise control on, you can also switch lanes automatically, but I think you have to kind of touch the steering wheel to begin to begin the turn so i can't just put on the indicator here i need to kind of touch the wheel just a little bit and then it goes in to the lane and hopefully goes back in the lane as well and i i never use these autonomous driving modes not even in my own tesla model 3 i just like to be in control of the vehicle at all times i do use the cruise control for just keep maintaining the speed but that's about it honestly i do really love these nixie numbers for the radio frequency it looks like it's a good mix between old and new it looks retro but at the same time it looks futuristic as well so nice little touch by kia to implement these uh, type of graphics for the radio frequencies
it definitely has enough power for every everyday use if, but if you're if you're looking for that extra punch you get from an EV it's not really there with the single motor it's only 225 horsepower you have the power needed for whatever situation you want but it's not you know that uh, enthusiastic uh, EV punch and torque that you feel in for example the Volvo C40 recharge and also of course uh, the Tesla Model 3 performance I'm not sure what the dual motor is gonna feel like I know there is a 500 plus EV6 coming out later and that will definitely have that EV punch that we're used to where you get all the torque from standstill this is a nice car it's a uh, nice commuter car I would say you have the range you have the eco mode not too much power but that's okay that's not what all EVs need to have either but it has all the technology you need and also all the power you need as I said uh, for most everyday driving. So let's talk about the noise at highway speeds. We're doing 72 miles per hour right now, or 70, and the noise is uh, pretty good actually. You have a lot of rubber on these 19 inch wheels. One thing I do wish to change, that I would change if I got this trim, trim level with the 19s, is to put some bigger wheels on there. You know me, I love bigger wheels. Even if I lose 10 miles of range, I'm still gonna have to have the wheelhouses being filled out by out by the wheels and I think the dual motor does a, a lot better job with that but I'm not a fan of the wheel design of those specific wheels they look a little too edgy and too sharp too aggressive I would have rather have something more subtle but still the same size as 21s that we have on the dual motor GT trim level navigate to Starbucks Atlantic and Turnpike 1 thing about this navigation that I absolutely love is the augmented reality head-up display. I'm not sure how well this is going to show up on the GoPro. I really hope you can see the arrows. So when we're going to take this exit and the closer we get to the uh, to the turn by the red light down there, the arrow is actually going to change and show me in real time where I need to turn in the head-up display in 3D. It's such a cool little detail. This is something, this head-up display, this navigation, this is what I want in a Tesla. I wish Tesla had this sort of head-up display. They don't need to put the gauge cluster on the Model 3, that's fine, but I do wish we had a head-up display like this cool thing right here. Can you see the arrows? now being animated as I turn off the highway. It's really cool. And even though it's daylight, it's super crisp still, and I can clearly see the uh, all the inf information that I need on the head-up display, which I think it's, uh, is, is a good job by Kia to implement something like that. It makes it a whole lot easier not to have to look down on the uh, infotainment screen right here every time you need to make a turn, because all the information you need is right there in front of you. To sum up my thoughts on the Kia EV6 rear-wheel drive, I think it's a fantastic commuter EV with a smooth ride and great range. Not maybe the most fun car to drive, but that's okay. You can always go for the dual motor if you want more power and better handling with the performance tires. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'll be making a range test video and talk about five things I love and five things I dislike about the EV6 in the coming week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.